Hi everybody, this is Kefren, your favorite French Canadian. Today I'm going to show you how to boost your FPS and scum in 2023. We're going to start by optimizing Windows and after that we will go inside of the game. So now the best setting for Windows for gaming. So first of all, we're going to search for game mode in the search bar. Make sure that game mode is activated for the past like year. It's pretty good. Uh, you're getting a decent performance and you're going to make sure that all your resources are focused on the game that you're playing. For the Xbox game bar, I still recommend to deactivate this one, causing stuttering, crashing in some games. So I'm not a huge fan of the Xbox game bar. And for the capture, make sure that the background recording is at off and also the, record, uh, the recorded audio is at off. Another thing that I recommend, it's the hardware accelerated GPU scheduling. Make sure that you're searching for graphics setting. You will need an NVIDIA card, 1000 series or more recent. It will really help with bottleneck. So if you have a 1050, 1050 Ti, 1060, even the 2060, you can expect a nice 2 to 5% boost. And also you can expect like less stuttering when you're using that. So I re really recommend to use that. Another thing that is really important, it's your driver. Make sure that you have the latest driver from AMD, NVIDIA, even Intel, if you have an iGPU on your processor. Um, so for an example here with AMD, you just click check for update and it's going to show you if you have the latest one. You can do the same thing with NVIDIA. Another thing that I can recommend with the um, NVIDIA and AMD, they have a, an image scaling uh, for the past like a couple of months. Um, for from AMD, it's called Super Resolution, and for Nvidia, it's NIS. I have dedicated video to, who's gonna like show you how to use that and how to configure it. But to explain you quickly what it's about, uh, so you need to enable this. So for an example, I'm playing uh, in 2K because my monitor in, is in 2K. I'm going inside of my game. I lower the resolution at 1080p, and the software will scale it back at 2K. And with this process, I can save like 15, 20% in my FPS. Also, you can do it if you have like a 4K monitor and you want to do 1080p or 2K. Uh, you can expect a nice boost. The image quality will not be the same if you compare with native, but in some game, it's working very well and you it's very tough to see the difference. So I, I recommend to, to use it if you're struggling with your FPS. So if you have an NVIDIA card, just go on your NVIDIA setting, go to control panel, open it, go to manage 3D setting and just use pretty much the setting that I'm currently using. Honestly, they're pretty much default. So the first one that you need to change is your low latency mode. If you have this technology, make sure that it's at on. The other one is your if you want to lock your FPS. Uh, for an example, you have like a 170 Hertz monitor and you want to stay in your G-Sync ring. Uh, range sorry you just put your uh, FPS here at like something like 167 something like that you want to be under 170 Hertz to always stay in your G-Sync range so if you want to do that it will do that for all your game it's a global setting over there so I'm gonna unlock it and this is pretty much it if you have access to the change ECC state I recommend to uncheck it this will slow your VRAM so you don't want to use that for change resolution, make sure that you're playing native. So you're, if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 1080p monitor, go with 1080p. And super important, look at your refresh rate. A lot of people <laughs> are missing this step. They buy like a new screen and by default it's at 60. So use the uh, maximum refresh rate that is available on your uh, monitor. The last parameter will be your G-Sync. So I recommend if you want to use G-Sync, I recommend to, first of all, you need to enable it. And I recommend to use the enable for window and full screen. So if you're playing a game like in borderless mode, it will be applied. Also, you can select just one uh, display screen, depending on whatever. If, if your second screen is not compatible with G-Sync, you will just push it to one monitor. Uh, me, I'm not using it. I have a 4090 uh, for my GPU, so I just want to unlock my FPS. So in majority of the game, I'm getting like 250 FPS and um, my monitor refresh rate is at 170 Hertz. So I just want to lower my input lag. So that's why I just unlock everything, but it really depends on your situation. So this is pretty much it for NVIDIA. Another thing that I recommend, it's your energy profile. So write energy in your search bar, go to power option. Make sure that you're running something like balance or high performance. Um, on a de desktop computer, it should not be an issue. But if you're playing on a laptop, 
really make sure that you're using that or a special profile for performance uh, from your brand like Asus, Dell or whatever. The thing is sometimes when you plug your uh, PC in the wall, unplug using it with the battery, sometimes it stay at power saver and you don't want to use that when you're playing a game. So super important to be plugged in and also uh, to use a proper uh, performance profile. Another thing that I can recommend, it's the Intelligent Standby List Cleaner. This is a software made by the guy from DDU. Um, it's, it's pretty amazing, honestly. Um, it will help if you don't have a lot of RAM in your PC. So if you have 4 gig of RAM, 8 gig, 12 gig, uh, after that, you should be fine. Windows is doing the job properly. So it will free memory and it's going to make sure that it optimizes your standby list. So what I recommend normally, it's look at your total memory here. In my case, it's 32. Just divide it by 2. So for me, it's 16. Just press start and it will run automatically. And you just lower the software like that. And you're going to make sure it's optimized. So it's a really good software. And also it helps a little bit with uh, stuttering. So I really recommend to use that. One last thing is um, I have dedicated video on my channel about overclocking CPU, overclocking GPU, depending on your brand and stuff. And it's pretty good because it there are basic overclocking guide. I don't touch voltage, so it's pretty safe. You can expect sometimes 2% to 10% boost in your FPS, depending on your thermal, depending on your component. But it's, it's something that you need to look at too if you want to optimize your PC um, for the best performance. So now let's go inside of the game. Just before launching the game, double click on the game, you will see three different API. The first one will be DirectX 11, the second one is DirectX 12, and the third one is Vulkan. It really depends on the generation of your video card. Normally, if you have something recent for the past like three years, DirectX 12 should be the way to go now with SCUM. If your card is very old, definitely go with DirectX 11. And if you have like a Radeon card or a card like maybe from four years or five years ago, go you can test Vulcan. Vulcan sometimes you're getting more FPS than DirectX 12 but I had a lot of issue with stability in my FPS so definitely look at this. So now let's go inside of the game. So now inside of the game so first of all display mode really important to play full screen all the other uh, display mode will cause you stuttering so you don't want to use that. Resolution, you want to use your uh, main resolution, your native from your monitor. So if you have a 2K monitor, go with 2K. If you have a 4K, go with 4K. VSync, put this one at off if you want uh, to have the uh, lower input lag. If you have FreeSync or G-Sync technology, definitely activate those. For FOV, first person or third, all the FOV, um, more you will add FOV, less you will have FPS. You need to render more stuff in front of you. So if you're limited by your computer, don't go too crazy with FOV. Start at the middle of the slider. And after that, you can definitely put a little bit higher if uh, your FPS are good. Camera bobbing intensity, I recommend to go with zero for better visibility. So now let's start with the render scale. I recommend to go with 100. Don't upscale or downscale. You have cool technology in this game like DLSS. If you have an RTX card, I recommend to go with ultra quality. Uh, all this, those other parameters are not that great, honestly. When you're static, everything looks good. But when you start moving, everything looks blurry. So that's why I recommend to go with ultra quality. If you don't have that, you can definitely use FSR at quality. And uh, if you're wondering, you have both and you don't know which one is better, DLSS will be better for your visual. Shadow quality, I recommend to go with low. If I compare Epic to low, you can expect 13% boost in your FPS. Post-processing quality, you can expect a nice 8% boost and a better visibility, so go with low. Effect quality, not a huge amount of FPS, but it uh, will stabilize your FPS. So when stuff like will explode, when you're shooting and stuff like that, super important to put this one at low. Texture quality and memory, epic if you have 6 gig of uh, VRAM on your GPU and more. If you have 4 gig, go with high. If you have 3 gig, go with medium. And less than 3 gig, go with low for both. View distance, I recommend to go with medium. Don't go at low, honestly. Too much pop in, you will not see anything in front of you. So I recommend to go with medium. If you're using DLSS, you can go at high easily. Uh, epic, don't necessarily use it. It, uh, it will tank your FPS a lot. Foliage quality and fog quality, those one you can go with low, another 8% boost in your FPS. Motion blur deactivated for better visibility. 
all those shadows uh, option over there precision resolution distance field shadow and ambient occlusion go with low low off off another 16 percent boost in your fps over there reflection quality go with low translucency uh, volume blur you want to deactivate it for better visibility same thing with depth of field you don't want to use that lens flare go with low color fringe you can activate it easily bloom quality go with low a little bit like two percent boost in your fps but again it's question of visibility tone mapper quality you can run medium or even high not a huge deal for your fps deactivate the light shaft quality and separate translucency pass and for those one cloud quality and cloud shadow quality if you put those one at low you can expect 10 percent boost in your fps so huge impact over there for the streaming speed you can go at high if you're limited with your CPU, don't use the 3D audio. Uh, it will tank your FPS a lot. So if you have like a two core or an old like i3 or i5, don't go too crazy with the 3D audio. So this is pretty much it for my SCUM guide. If you have any question about it, just comment in the YouTube section. Post me your rig, CPU, GPU, and RAM. I will try to help you the best that I can. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Peace.